this week uh, at SAS phase uh, EGS, uh, well, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mantia Jawara, and I'm a professor at uh, New York University, New York. Uh, I do comparative literature, art and culture, and cinema. Uh, I've been in this program at EGS now for a few years, and it's a, I love this place. I love coming here. Uh, primarily because of the collegiality, the friends, the students, uh, the maturity of everybody in a small place where you, you are forced to relate. You see each other every day at breakfast, at lunch, and then in the classrooms. Uh, and so it's an intellectual incubation that grows on you. So having said that, this year I have been teaching with a uh, Denise Ferreira, Dr. Denise Ferreira Alvaro, and uh, uh, Dr. Stefano, and Dr. Morton, Fred Morton. And we wanted to teach a class on uh, Edouard Glissant's Poetic de la Relation and how it relates to uh, black studies and black talk. This is really the reason for uh, our course this semester. And it was a unique class because it was a course taught in three days by four professors coming from different parts of the world. And what was uh, uniting us was Edouard Glissant's Poetic de la Relation. And we decided to, to select a few areas in, in that book. Uh, there is a chapter called uh, The Black Beach. The Black Beach is important because it's about language, it's about communication, it's about environment, it's about politics. Uh, it, it's really, descriptively speaking, it's, it's, it's a very poetic chapter about a beach in Martinique uh, and where during the night the, the ocean waves uh, in the winds and in their relation to the, the, the volcano sand at the bottom of the ocean just sweep all the black sand on the, on the beach. And then by the morning, the sand is washed back into the ocean. So Edward Gleason had decided to focus on this particular uh, Sunday where all the Caribbean um, uh, Martinicans uh, meet there. You know, the Black Beach is in a, in a small town near uh, Fort de France called uh, Le Diamant, the, the Diamond, because there is a big rock there that they call the Diamond. So what was fascinating is that oh, the, when the Martinican come on Sunday at the beach, like most people around the world, they discuss the issues of their country. Some people say, yes, what we need in this country is socialism. What we need in this country is a psychological healing of our population. What we need in this country is uh, an autonomy from France. So everybody gives their opinion. And then Edouard Glissant noticed one man who had stopped talking. He stopped talking and no one knows why. His mother can't get him to talk. So he, every day, he goes from one end of the beach to another end of the beach. He's doing this daily uh, in harmony with the wind, with the ocean waves that are also cleaning the beach or dirtying it or doing whatever. And Gleason keeps saw the repetition of his coming and going, and Gleason to try to talk to him, and the guy ignored Gleason. So when Gleason stopped talking to him, he too comes every day and sees Gleason sitting at his porch. And one day, he shook head, heads and communicated with Gleason. And Gleason used that metaphorically to talk about human relation with the environment, the wind, the water, the volcano. But also, this man's silence is saying more about the issues in Martinique than all the people speaking. 
It's a beautiful chapter. And since our theme was opacity, we started with that. And then uh, we, we, we have another chapter on relation, uh, dictation. And uh, we had to define what Glissa meant by, by relation. Because most people see it as, you know, interpersonal relation, which it is. But it is also, so it, in that sense, it's connecting people. That's one meaning of relation. Another powerful meaning of relation is, there is the word in it, relay. Relaying something as uh, in a race in the Olympic where you take the torch, you give it to someone else. So in this case, you take knowledge, give, give it to someone else. The knowledge get, become different, gets bigger, and then relay to someone else. So the world start going like that. And, and then uh, relation is also telling the story. It's a, 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 a relate, you know, like you know, telling the story. And how the, you know, how, because Gleason came to the conclusion toward the end of his life that greatness of nation is no longer measured by guns, by economic power, by any of these things, you know. So he, he, he come to that notion, he, he said, yes, of course, this is, these are, people are still doing this at the UN, threatening one another, but the greatness of nation is the acuity of the intuition, our capacity to understand from nation to nation. How do we relate that intuition, aesthetic relation? It's more an aesthetic relation that's going to create nations than big uh, countries with guns and powers and dictators. So uh, then we, we talk about philosophical, uh, intellectual, artistic uh, implication of this word relation. Another word that's very important to Gleason, and I'll stop there, uh, is the whole concept of opacity. Uh, concept of opacity is crucial to Gleason because he says, one, there are things about you yourself that you, you do not know. You don't know yourself as well as you think you do. So you have to assume that the person that you are talking to or facing you, also, uh, you don't know some things about that person, but that person also does not know some things about him or herself. So, therefore, I consent, I accept your opacity, you accept my opacity, and from that point, we enter in relation. So it's a chaotic moment. This beginning of encounters, of meeting, is chaotic, because we both have opacities, and then we, we begin to create a relation between our opacities. We enter in relation, or maybe we don't like each other. So, but this was very important. And then he said, opacity also, uh, just by saying that you, are, you have an opacity, I have an opacity, Gleason said, opacity is what guarantees diversity in the world. The first thing that is the guarantee of diversity, the, the, the generator of diversity in the world. That's the first thing. So the role of opacity, therefore, is how to reassemble differences. You know, your difference and my difference shouldn't go in their own radical direction. They should, on the contrary, enter in a relation. Because the relation is always what is important uh, to be sound. So one, uh, you have the same and the other. This is the philosophy we were taught uh, from uh, continental philosophy to rationality uh, to uh, legitimacy. You need to know the self and the other. And, and Gleason basically is saying, uh, but this, the same has always been defined as universal and as European. It has ignored the rest of the world. It has ignored the concept of opacity. So, uh, at the same time, when we also acknowledge your opacity, when we acknowledge difference, we couldn't define difference in a way that is unattainable, that is so radical that no one can do anything about it, because that kind of difference is as little as the same. So, the, the reason for difference is that as opacity produces 
diversity, differences, opacity ask us to bring differences in relation. And he said, this is really, this is at the bottom of Eglison. So I accept your opacity, your difference, you accept mine. Uh, without closing my difference, without closing your difference, and we go into relation. And then what is going to come out of that cannot be predicted. That's also something else. But that is how we create humanities. We cannot create humanities by predicting them through rationality or by trying to force everybody to become like us. You know, I would say, you know, I understand. Yeah, I can understand you. I know where you're coming from. I can dig it. I'm actually saying you are me, but please and say you are wrong. <laughs> so, so that that is more or less what we were talking about.